Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into Dan Kapanuk Photography. Um, this is kind of a, uh, I don't know, kind of a weird topic that I've been thinking about. Uh, maybe some of you, I'm sure you guys can relate to actually. You know, we, we get into these ideas that one camera is better than another or we got to have better gear. You know, I take the, you know, the, uh, the mirrorless thing now, obviously. Uh, I haven't gone mirrorless. I have no intention at the moment to go mirror. I have no reason to. You know, that's actually a topic for another discussion. <laughs> um, but what's really crazy is the D850, you know, was my dream camera. Uh, I started with the D3200, and I started about 2016. This came out later, and I just wanted this camera. The D850 is arguably the best DSLR Nikon ever made. Uh, countless millions of amazing images have been made with this. Careers have been made with this. Photographers to this day still use this. Uh, for me, it was the end-all, be-all camera. Um, and I, I just I couldn't wait to actually get one. I couldn't afford it. I went from the D3200 to the D7200, which is a great camera. And the majority of my images and prints that sell were taken with that camera. But in the middle, something crazy happens, right? Um, before I got the D850, of course, I got the D700. Now, I've already done videos on this, uh, the love, of, the crazy love affair. We fall in love with the D700. And I've got two of these guys. Um, but the crazy thing for me is I've, I've had the D850 since the end of last summer, since August. I actually ended up buying this. I got a, what I consider a good deal on it. And I'm fortunate because I've, I sold enough prints that summer to actually buy it. So it prints paid for itself. Um, and they're business tools. And I don't drag these around any kind of family event. You know, the best camera for that kind of stuff, in my opinion, for catching the memories is just a cell phone. <laughs> it's fantastic. So they're strictly business tools and, you know, whatever. Um, but what I have found myself doing is choosing the D700 over the D850. Am I crazy? <laughs> Why would I do that? I mean, this is the end all be all camera, right? I mean, it is like a universal camera. You can take anything with this camera. 45 megapixels, the dynamic range is amazing. It's got an ISO of 64, dual card slots, great autofocus system. It's fast, shoots enough uh, images per second for me. This whole 20, 30 plus to me is nuts. I just would not want to even think about processing that many images. But the thing is, it's interesting is, I don't know if it's just me. I mean, I did some research after I got this and there's a, a learning curve with this camera. Now, you know, the, the menu systems and, and ergonomics are fantastic and they're consistent, obviously, with the system. But I started, I took it out as soon as I got it, started shooting it, and I, I had problems. I was like, couldn't get the focus sharp. You know, I was getting grain at 64 ISO. And, I, you know, turns out I'm not the only one. There's other people apparently out there with that. Um, so I took a few shots with it and whatever. Uh, and I wasn't doing great with it. Um, but the other thing was, which I, you know, you don't think about necessarily, is 45 megapixels has a lot of advantages for certain things. But they're huge files. And my computer is like, I don't know, maybe four years old, five years old now. And with a one terabyte hard drive, it was already at least half full. And I don't know. The point is, my computer tends to choke on huge files. So then I kind of got sort of freaked out with this thing. But at the same time, I had fallen in love with the D700. I love the color rendition of that, that it gives. That's why we love these things, right? But I also love the file size. So file size is perfect. I also love the 12 megapixels. I think it's perfect for people in general. Uh, but even though I just said that the D800 850 is completely universal, so is this. <laughs> you know, this is a professional camera. You can shoot anything you want with it. Uh, does it have the dynamic range? No. Do you need it? Not always. I mean, if you're shooting portraits and street photography or whatever, as long as you're close with your, you know, exposure, 
You don't need to necessarily bring back the sky. You don't need a dynamic range. You don't necessarily need to pull out, um, pull up the shadows for the detail that you would, with the, you know, with the, the the 45 megapixels. And you certainly can print as big as you really need to, assuming you've got a sharp image uh, with 12 megapixels. Um, so I shot a couple of events at the end of last year. I did a coffee and tea festival, in San Francisco. Or excuse me, coffee and chocolate. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> um, I've done uh, car shows. I've done uh, tattoo shows. Uh, what else did I? And, oh, and I've done some videos with some other uh, events. I did a river festival, all these things. And I chose the D700 over the D850. Am I crazy? I mean, I, 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 the thing is, I was real happy with all the images that came out of the D700. All right, guys, so uh, here's a series of images. They're just random, uh, some events that I did do with the D700. And, oh, even in the low light, like at the tattoo show, it, it's fantastic. It, I can't think, I can't assume that they would really be any better if I took the D850. Uh, I took a lot of shots. The file size is great. And uh, of course the colors, the colors are fantastic inside and outside with, you know, the, the D700. So even though I have newer, in theory, better camera, you know, it doesn't make sense to even bother. Why not just continue, continue shooting with the D700? Uh, I don't know, maybe you guys have some thoughts on this, but overall for, for these, um, you know, I thought I'd, uh, thought I'd do really well. Now, I did a video of this too. I shot, in May, I shot uh, a monster truck show. And one day I took the D700s, the next day I took the D850. In terms of conception of the dark stuff, the nighttime kind of thing, you really can't tell the difference <laughs> between the images. We... All right, guys, so these first two images are kids in the truck. This was done with the D700 uh, with the 70 to 200. Colors are great as is expected and usual. Uh, these next two were done with the D850. Um, sharp, look good, not quite uh, the color saturation that you get at the D700. Uh, now this shot was taken with the D700, it's nighttime, and it was pretty grainy. Um, this one was done with the D850, not nearly as much grain, uh, and overall better. I mean, it's the craziest thing. Now, the other thing I've done recently is I've done a couple of photo shoots, uh, portraits, and um, the last one, the time before the last one, I elected to take again the D700 and the portraits came out great. All right guys, so yeah, I, I chose the D700 or the D850. Uh, this is Tiandre, great model. Um, he was super happy with the portraits. And I took three different lenses, the 85, the 24 to 70 and the 7200. Took several different shots of several different areas. Colors were fantastic. And overall, I just loved the look. But the one I did last week, you know, I, I decided I am crazy because what did I buy the damn camera for if I'm not using it, right? I mean, this was, the idea was this is going to replace the D7200 and be my all-around camera for everything. So I just say, you know, I need to give it a chance. I need to get out there and start shooting it. So I have been, and <laughs> I'm starting to love this camera too. I have no doubt, and I haven't done the deep dive into the D850 much beyond the early, you know, research. I'm sure there's just as many devotees as this as there is a D700 or anything else out there uh, because it is an amazing camera and can do pretty much anything. You know, even video if you want. I don't mix those two. Um, this is, of course, can do good video, but it's notorious for terrible focus, so whatever. I only shoot stills with it. But <clears throat> I just did a portrait shoot last week, and I decided to take out both to compare them. And I don't want to do a versus thing because I love both cameras and they both have their uses. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's the best tool for the job. 
that's that's what matters, right? And they're both very capable. So what I did is I took the D7200, <laughs> shit, I can't get this right, guys. <laughs> Too many things. I am so fortunate to have the option of the different tools. I really am and I appreciate what I've got because you know, I didn't start that way, obviously. Somehow we all managed to collect a ton of gear. And I don't, it's not like I have a ton of money to spend on this stuff. So I'm fortunate that I can sit there and go, geez, which one do I want to take today? So there's that. I am humbled by that. I really am. But I took D850 and I put a 70 to 200 on it. And I took the D700 and I put the 8514 on it. And then I went and shot pictures, one or the other. And... Unless you look at the metadata, <laughs> you really can't tell the difference. You know, you can't. And the clients who, they see these monster cameras come out, kind of intrigued. You know, clients don't care. That's the other thing. You don't need, I don't need a Z8 or Z9 uh, to do what I do. Um, the client doesn't care. They see the end result. I mean, you can shoot them with a cell phone if you want. <laughs> whatever as long as they love the pictures right it's just they have a cell phone and everybody has a cell phone so it doesn't make sense to sew up as a professional but a cell phone to do a shoot that's just my opinion <laughs> anyways so I'm, I'm going to post the images for you guys of the various things and and you can s take a look at them now this has the advantage of uh, going down ISO 64 and you know obviously the bottom line for the D700 is ISO 200. But when I coupled that with the 8514, certainly makes, I don't know how the science works, but I got ISO 64 on this with a 2.8 lens and an ISO 200 on the D700 with a 1.4 lens. Is this, is this some sort of equation that makes them kind of equal? It does in my head, I don't know. <laughs> it's gotta be something to do that, I guess. Um, I guess a real true comparison would be but put this at 200 and then go ahead and bop up the uh the 1485 to 2.8 <laughs> make them more equal in that respect whatever uh, it was a fun shoot uh he loved the pictures so that's again all that really matters all right guys uh, meet lucas so uh what i did when i took all these pictures i just threw them into one file and uh, lightroom and processed them sent out the ones i liked and didn't even look at which camera did what uh, lucas wanted all sorts of different types of images taken different looks so that's what we did this particular image was taken with the d7100 uh, f1.4, 1 400th of a second, of course the ISO was 200. Good colors, and overall it came out pretty well. Now what's interesting is I actually ended up bumping the ISO to 200 on the D850. Of course as I get rambling on and say some crazy things, the reality is I inadvertently matched the ISOs with uh, the D850. Shooting with the 7200, it's a 2.8, so naturally I had to drop the ISO due to you know the light that I had. Now this is a similar image taken with the DH50. I don't care for the look. It's obviously a little darker. Uh, it was a shorter exposure time, 1 to 50th. Uh, don't know why I do this kind of stuff. It just seemed to make sense at the time. Uh, but I don't care for the light, and I don't care too much for the color rendition in this one. I uh, certainly don't like his look. This is not one that he actually chose to keep. But it was shot at 200 millimeters, so it's already out there. One 250th of a second. One of the most notable things, really, in the difference is the focus. You know, with the 2.8, more of the face is in focus. When I zoom in, uh, the 1.4 actually you know, less is in focus, usually it's one eye or the other, um, but that's just the nature of the beast shooting with that sort of, you know, open uh, aperture. <laughs> Alright, so we moved to a different location on this one, this again at the D700 at 85, of course. Uh, went to 1.6, uh, 1.640th, because there was a little bit more light, 
Um, it could be a touch washed out, but still good separation from the background. Uh, decent smile. Uh, overall, pretty good to, happy with the composition. There's the headroom and the uh, distance between his hands and the bottom frame uh, look pretty good. Now, when we compare this one to uh, a similar image taken with the uh, D850, uh, the, the D850 again was uh, ISA 200. Not quite as much bulk in the background, obviously, there wouldn't be. In fact, the biggest difference really with these lenses when you zoom in is the 2.8 obviously has a little bit more focus than the 1.4. 1.4 generally you get a super sharp eyeball and the rest is, is okay. That's kind of the case with this in terms of actually, you know, comparing the two lenses. Uh, but this is a 1 250th of a second, 2.8 at 70 millimeters. Uh, overall, a decent image. Uh, not crazy about the left to right um, composition. Um, should have been, uh, should be nothing cut off on this one. At the end of the day, you know, which camera is better? Well, neither one really. <laughs> I do think the overall colors are still a little better with the D700. I mean, that's what we fall in love with. So what am I going to do in the future? Which one am I going to choose? You know, at this point, I, don't, I have no idea. Uh, for portraits, though, you know what? I probably, for the time being, will stick with the D700. But am I crazy, guys? Am I absolutely nuts for choosing the D700 over the D850? You know, you know, I mean, I guess it depends, again, what you use it for. You know, landscapes, 100%, uh, because that, to me, is the hardest to get. With all the contrast of the landscape with the skies and the shadows, you know, you can stack images. But if you don't, <laughs> and you can't, or whatever, this is going to have the dynamic range to pull out the detail of the shadows. It's going to have the dynamic range to bring the detail back in the sky, you know. Um, you're also going to have better zoom, or zoom, not zoom, but uh, crop capabilities, you know. Uh, you can crop in much further with this camera than you can with the 12 megapixels. Anyway, guys, this, this might be a silly argument. I don't know, silly video. I am definitely using the DA50 more and more. But it's going to be difficult <laughs> to not shoot with the D700 when I do some of those portraits. It's... The look is part of my style of, of, of photography. So, uh, but when I look at the two images to, side by side, yeah, they're really similar anyway, I guess. Anyway, as I think I was going down this tangent, then my clients are actually intrigued when they see these monstrous cameras come out. <laughs> and I tell them, yeah, it's old school, it's my style. And they're like, they dig it. They just love that, you know? It's the artist thing, you know? People dig that stuff. That's why I don't worry about AI or any of that stuff, right? Because People want a real artist rendition of what's going on. They want the personal thing. So, again, that's another subject for another matter, right? Anyway, guys, um, comment what you like. Do you guys have the similar problem, you know, uh, deciding which gear you want? Uh, do you have issues with sticking with your old gear even though you have new gear? <laughs> new, well, whatever. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Like, subscribe, share, put your comments down there. Let me know your thoughts on this ridiculous idea of an insanity here. All right, guys, take care. See you on the next one and keep shooting.